I am horrible about marketing. I've got to tell you, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't like doing it. There's nothing about it that I care about. Uh, I, so I, I am bad about saying okay and these cute little things and I'm preaching on this series. And uh, that, that's just not, that's not who I am. I've tried it, be real honest with you, and it handicaps me. Uh, because I, I just move so prophetically. I, I, this morning I'm up, and the Lord's speaking to me a couple things to say this morning that I didn't know yesterday, that there's just this thing goes on. So I think this is the fourth Sunday I've been trying to talk to you about how to take your mind back in the midst of anxious and outrageous times. Do you know we're living in one of the highest anxiety moments that we have ever lived in? And have you noticed that anxiety has turned to outrage? People aren't just anxious. They're looking for a way to express that anxiousness, and it, it's almost an outrageous behavior. And how do you take control and get your mind back, and how do you live in the midst of these moments that I believe is one of the most profound times of change that uh, we've ever experienced? We're going through one of the most just, I mean, change is taking place continually. There's this shift taking place, and anytime you see a shift take place, you got to know that God is going to shift sift you. He's he, he going to sift through our lives and he's going to look at certain things. And so I, I think it's real important that we have that spirit of Issachar who understood the times they were living in and they knew what to do. It, it's one thing to understand that it's anxious. It's one thing to understand, but it's another to know what to do, to have the wisdom to be able to live in that. So for the last three, four weeks, I've been talking to you out of 1 Peter chapter 5 where it says, humble yourselves. Uh, where he says, resist the enemy, uh, that lion that is a liar. Uh, so I've been talking to you about how Peter is speaking to people that are going through highly anxious times and trying to let that speak to us. Well, this morning, I want to go to Matthew's Gospel, the 26th chapter. And if you don't have a Bible, we'll make it easy, obviously, and put it up on the screen. But if you have a Bible, you got to turn there and look because this is the, this is the evening that Christ is betrayed. This is the evening where they come to get the Christ and they're going to they're gonna question him and they're going to beat him and they're going to take and kill him. So this is right after the upper room and the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and this is Peter's story. Peter is writing Matthew's gospel. He, he's, he, it's being translated. So this is his self-disclosure. So, so Peter's telling on himself. Nobody else is telling about him. No one's talking bad about him. He, he's telling you this in verse 69. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it. He denied it. Say he denied it. That word denied means he refuses to admit the truth refuses to admit the truth. He denied it saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out of the gateway, another, say another, another. girl saw him and thank God for girls, <laughs> saw him and said to those who were there, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, he denied, say again, again. Hmm. with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. And he began to cuss. I love this guy. Have you ever just had something irritate you to the point you just started? None of you. I know you're holy, <laughs> sanctified, on your way to glory, and you never... I love Peter telling on himself, Rebecca. He just goes, I just started cussing. I mean, come on, you ever had somebody just push you to the limit and you just went off? You just went off. I know, you're sitting there going, I never do that. We cast that out right after service. You, you didn't even know it was in there, but you just lost your, you didn't know you were crazy, but you're crazy. I do not know the man. And immediately... A rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word Jesus who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus prophesied this boy's dumbness. Jesus knew the boy was dumb. He knew the boy didn't really have snuff. Okay. So he went out and wept bitterly. Mm. Man, that's good. You know, my wife, she, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spiritual language that if you start using around her, she'll go giddy. 
I mean, all I got to do is mention it. All I got to do is hand her something with the word on it. And I, and I mean, she goes, if she sees the word clearance, all she's got to do is see the word clearance. And I mean, she goes, God is speaking. I mean, Quentin, I've been praying for our finances. And looky there, it's on sale. I mean, it is her spiritual. You, you, you know those five lung la- love languages? There's a sixth one, yeah. Clarence. Yeah. I mean, you want to get into her good. I, I mean, when it goes to 30% down, man, we are. And you know, it was another woman that told her that. We get married, we're kids, and we moved to Oklahoma City, and I have a cousin there that's 18, 19 years older than we are. Her name was Jerry Glass. And, and, and we'd come home, I'd come home from work from our little apartment, and there'd be Jerry, and she'd have my 18-year-old wife, and she'd be standing there, and Jerry'd go, we saved you money. I'd say, what do you mean you saved me money? She said, this was 20 bucks, and we got it for 10. I saved you $10 today. I, I, I mean, I was not very smart, but I knew it cost me something. $10. Well, we saved you all, I, and, and it's still that way. I come home, she goes, I saved us money today. What that means is it's in the trunk. That's what it means. It, it's in the trunk. It, it, clearance, clearance. It just, you know, it, 80. And we're standing, J.C. Penny, J.C. Penny, and, and we're looking at something. It's 30% off, and this lady comes up, and my wife. She looks at this lady and she goes, well, if you take 30% off, would you take 45% off? I'm going, honey, we're in J.C. Penney. We're not at the thrift store down on South Main. We're in. And Annie starts dickering with her over Ken. And she said, well, if you'll sell it for 30% less, you'll take another 20% off. I mean, we go from 45 to 50, bam, just like that. And, and I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. You don't do that. I mean, you do that. And, and uh, that lady leaned, I'll never forget this. That lady leaned back. She goes, well, she said, ma'am, you do know this is out of season. And Nanny goes, well, yeah. And that lady stood there and she goes, well, it's no longer profitable for us. And we do need to get it off the shelf and make room for something that's more profitable for us. Say with me, it's no longer profitable. See, see I, I begin to understand something. Whatever is no longer profitable needs to go. Do you know all kinds of spiritual people that I know today have something in them that's not profitable anymore and it needs to... You got a lot of stuff that's in you that's not profiting you anymore and you need to have a clearance sale. You need to get rid of that stuff that's no longer... You got some thoughts that are just not working for you anymore. They might have worked for you in another season, but they ain't working for you in... How do you live in an age of anxiety? Well, number one, you might want to check and see if some of those thoughts you're having are working for you. Because I don't think they're producing for you in a way that they used to produce for you. They might have worked when you met Jesus three and a half years ago. They might have worked for you last night, but there's a shift going on in the spirit. There's a change happening in the spiritual climate. Jesus is no longer going to walk with you. He wants to walk in you, Peter. And he ain't going to walk in the thoughts that you've had up to this moment. He's not going to share your thoughts. He, he, I, I, I've, I've walked with you, but now I want to be in you, and I can't get in there when you have some of these thoughts. that. Have... It's time that we have a clearance sale. It's time that we recognize that these transitions we're going through. The, it, 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 we've been married 43 years. It's taken us about 42 and a half to learn another word. Declutter. Declutter. Some guy introduced that word. I promise you. Because when you bring that stuff home, you got to get rid of some of them shoes. Because now we, we, had, we raised four children, and so we got multiple bedrooms and multiple closets. I have half of one. This side of one is mine. The other five closets, because we don't know how to 
declutter. Don't look at me like that. Now, I've been in your tool shed. <laughs> okay, never mind. I, I, you might need to get rid of some stuff, so some other stuff, because you can't put new wine. You, you, you've got to understand that sometimes you simply have to let go of it. You've got to get rid of that stuff. I'm, I, one of the things that I'm prophetically going to tell you this morning is you've got to get rid of the depression. Nobody else is going to come do it. That depression is taking the place where joy ought to be. And you're going to have to rise up as a child of God and take responsibility for your own emotions. Other people do not put emotions in your life. You are putting those emotions in your life. And you are going to have to stand up and take authority over your own bitterness. Over your own cynicism, over your own fear, no one else is responsible for your emotional health but you. <laughs> you prove the point. In the name of Jesus, depression has to go. In the name of Jesus, bitterness and fear has to go. In the name of Jesus, I got to get this out because there's something else coming. I got to get rid of this stuff. Peter, Peter, oh my goodness. They were in the upper room. They were in the Garden of Gethsemane. The soldiers came. He swung the sword, and how embarrassing. Jesus put the ear back. I mean, that's embarrassing. I stood up for you, and I fought for you, and you healed the enemy. Do you know right now in this nation, if God heals your enemy, you'd be mad? You'd be mad. He healed. Talk about disconnected. And now he's standing in the courtyard, and they've got Jesus up here, and they're questioning. And, 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 she, and Peter ran. He ran from Jesus. And he, the Bible says he followed at a distance. You know how many Christians I know right now are following at a distance? You're following at a distance. You're too far behind. You're afraid. Hear me, this is not, God's taking us through something. And this is a moment to acknowledge that I got a deficit in me. That I got some thoughts inside of me that are keeping me from getting close. I've got some thoughts in me that are keeping me from engaging in prayer. Listen, you don't need a motivational speech off this. You need a prophetic word that says, get closer, not further. Draw near, and I'll draw near to you. That, that's the Bible. The Bible says the closer you get, yeah, but I don't like some stuff. Get closer anyway. You think Peter liked what was going on? He did not like what was happening. And Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and the servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus, but he denied it. I get tickled, Pete. I, I listen to Pete talk a lot. I, I, I follow him. In fact, he's got a Bible study. We need to get that up there on uh, Monday nights. We need to make sure we... Uh, uh, but, but I hear Pete. He has this whole school on identity. He's got this whole school on find your identity, right? We're trying to find... Listen, let me tell you how to find your identity. Ask who you're sitting by. Ask right there. Because that little girl said, I know you. That little girl stepped up and said, you're, you're, you're Peter. You're, you're Joe. You're Bob. I know who you are. You might not know who you are, but I got news for you. Other people know who you are. If you want to know who you are, just ask your wife. Ask your kids. Maybe not. <laughs> See, you can never hide who you are. You can deny who you are, but you can't hide. You can say, no, that's not me. I didn't know I'm not. Yeah, you are. The little girl saw through him. Man, don't you hate it when someone reminds you of who you are? Particularly if they're reminding you of a better version of you. I mean, particularly when you're broken and low and you're having a pity party, you don't want anybody to... Rem Have you ever been mad at your spouse and then your memory for that date comes up and you wrote her a love letter four years ago? Scroll. 
I don't want to be reminded of a better day. Not when I'm trying to be a victim. Not when I'm trying to be a martyr. I don't want somebody to show up with me and go, aren't you the guy that recognized him as the Christ? You're the dude that's going to be the rock upon which, right? You're that guy. You walked on water. Well, right now I'm hiding. I don't want to be reminded of a day when I had faith because I ain't got none now. I don't want to be reminded. Uh, weren't, weren't you on the mountaintop when, when Moses and Elijah, weren't, weren't you? You don't want to be reminded that you had faith, hope, and confidence, but today you, you're hiding. You know that people today had faith, they ain't got none now. They lose it every four years. Never mind. I'll back up. Have you ever been full of faith, full of purpose, full of promise? You had a prophecy, but tonight you ran. I mean, you know, you, 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 yeah. you never thought you were going to go through this, but you got a phone call. You, you never thought you were going to do like this, but there was one event. You saw the worst of humanity, and now you don't trust any of it. You had something happen to you. You were traumatized, and so you just quit. That's, that's where this man is. Yeah, I, I, never thought, I never thought I'd be divorced. I never thought I'd be out of work. I never thought I was crazy. But I'm crazy. I can lose my mind. Hey, I, I, boy, 2020, we never thought we'd be here, did we? We never thought we'd be going through this crap, but we're going through this crap, and we're losing our minds. We're anxious, and we're outraged, and we're upset, and we're... No, we're not. Yeah, we are. We're denying this thing. We, we're, we, we don't trust anybody. We're cynical of everybody. We're trying to throw rocks at anyone. And see, none of us want to be reminded of when we had it together. We don't even want to go to church. We won't pray. See, Peter's telling on himself, I had this moment. I had this breakdown. Everything collapsed. It, it, I disconnected. I was struggling. I was weak. I was, I've always had this problem. I'd have a moment when I'd say, thou art the Christ. And then I'd have this moment say, no, you cannot do that. You can't go to the cross. And Jesus turned around and looked at Peter and said, you are not mindful of the things of God. We are all bipolar in this we have this problem he's the christ but we can't do it that way he's the christ but surely we don't have to go to a cross he's the christ but he can't so you we've always struggled with his being and my thoughts and can i tell you something his thoughts are higher and other than ours and there is a moment that God puts all of us in situations and challenges thoughts that are not profitable. Challenges thoughts and ways of thinking that we cannot take with us into the future. They're just, they're just, see, some things happen to reveal things in us that have to be cleared out of the way. Sometimes things happen, situations, a year arises. And my friends, we just have to face the fact that some of the ways we've been thinking just aren't God's ways. I don't mean that mean. I'm just saying that, listen, there's a more profitable thing for us. Be healthier for us. God's trying to clear out a sense. I, I, one of the words I have for you this morning is we have to stand up and say, that has to get out of here. I need that out of my life. And instead of waiting around for something, I need to stand up and clear the thing out on my own. This stuff's got to go so that I can continue to grow. This stuff has to get out of here. There's a shift taking place, and I'm a bit disconnected. And i gotta, I got to look at this. You were one of them. I don't want to uh, I don't want to be. And I love his answer. I don't even know what you're talking about. Have you ever looked at a kid and asked them, how did that chocolate get on that? Have you ever looked at a kid and said, how did that get? Have you ever? No, you sit there and look at me. I come right at you. How did that happen? I don't know. They act like they haven't got a clue that they left all their shoes outside. 
I love my grandkids, but you know how long it takes to pick up stockings after they leave? The dog starts bringing them. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Acting like we don't understand. See, when you deny your identity, you will also deny your destiny. When you deny who you are, you will also deny what he's prophesied over your life. And that evening, that evening, can I tell you something? If God said you're going to be the rock, you're going to be the rock. Last time I looked, the sun was still in the sky. Did anybody notice this morning? I mean, if he puts it up there, it has not fallen out. I mean, if God says it, that's the way it's going to be. If he said you're going to be the rock, you're going to be the rock. If he said you're going to be the head, you're going to be the head. If he said you're going to be blessed going in and going out, then you're going to be blessed going in and going out. I don't care what the anxiety or the outrage of the moment is. If God said it, that's the way it's going to be. And Peter, you may be living in denial right now, but can I tell you something? His word's going to come to pass, not because you are so suchy much, but because he has declared it into your life. Listen, the ocean is still moving. I mean, they keep trying to figure out why it moves, but it comes in and it goes out and it comes in and it goes out. You don't need to get too anxious about it because if God said you're going to do this, you're going to do this. And when he went out the gateway, another girl, say another girl, say another. Man, thank God for girls. Thank God for women. Can I tell you, some of you stupid people need to understand if it wasn't for a girl chasing you, you'd be in trouble. Another girl, not the same girl, another girl. You know, sometimes girls are smarter than you are. See, I could preach on this. And every woman in here ought to be going, that's right. (laughs) Women, this is your moment. I'm telling you, ladies, this is your time. Good Lord. Another girl walked up to the apostle. You know, even the apostle needed an apostle, and it was a little girl. Oh, never mind. Another girl, she, he's trying to, have you ever tried to run from somebody? Have you ever just tried to withdraw? I mean, you you didn't want to engage in the debate, so you're trying to get away. So you're running from the reality of the truth that's coming to you. And God just follows you out of the room. I used to preach on how Peter was running. And then I began to realize God just picks up his chair and keeps meeting you wherever you go. He just chases you into your own denial. He just chases you into your own. He just follows you out of the courtyard, just keeps following you and said, weren't you? And and I mean, you just, all I'm trying to do is get away. All I'm trying to, I'm just trying not to, I'm just staying home, pastor, till I get. No, God's coming to you. And God, what you don't realize is God will send another little girl to look at you. He'll send somebody else to go, "Uh uh-huh. You used to pray, "Uh uh-huh. You used to believe, yeah, but somebody touched. If I hear the word trigger one more time, you can disconnect the trigger. You you, you can. I I, I mean, it it appeals, it feels like to me that people are walking around going, I got a trigger, don't touch my trigger. Well, get healed. Come up here, I'll help you. Get over that. Listen, that's psychology, not spirituality. I love you. But that's psychology. Spirituality says, come here a little closer. Let me bring healing into that broken place. Oh. Well, I just, I'm I just, I'm just. I'm, I'm. Another girl. Another. Say another. Can I just tell you, you think you get away from it, but there'll be another one. And he denied it again. I do not know this man. Man, it, it, this is not a good time. To know Jesus. It just ain't popular. Oh no, it's popular if you will twist the gospel to meet the need of the culture you're in front of. But if you if you just preach the gospel, it isn't very popular right now. Now, if you if you accommodate the culture, oh you're not. See, I now I'm being too honest with you. As long as I say what the culture wants me to say, they're okay. But but, but when I start saying, I don't know this man. It's not comfortable right now. I'm I'm afraid. He, He was supposed to overthrow Rome. 
He was supposed to reveal his power. Those two men on the road to Emmaus, you know, we were hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. Well, you mistaken yourself. It's not about Israel. You, you forget that's too small. I, I, I'm here to redeem the world. I'm here to redeem the future. I'm here to redeem the Gentiles. It's not just about your group and your opinion. It's about everyone. It's all not. See, it's not popular. See, I can just get close to it and all of a sudden it's not popular. This isn't, we were hoping he'd do what we wanted him to do. We were hoping he'd relieve the pressure I'm under. We were hoping he'd, see, when your policy takes the place of people, your policy's got to go. See, this is about people. It's about all people. It's not just about, oh, well, nobody's going to listen to me. See, I told you, it, 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 it's, it's interesting and a little while later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. This is funny. This is funny. You, your speech, your accent. See, I was raised by grandmothers. <laughs> and it, even if they were living today and I get back around them, I'd begin to talk like that. I'd pick it back up. It taken me 40 years not to talk about turtle shells. <laughs> turtle shells. Glove boxes. I carry you over town. First time I looked at Annie, I said, I just carry you over town. She said, you going what? I said, it's in the turtle shell. She said, we don't own one. Turtle. See, your accent. Well, I, mm, I can remember trying to run away from my grandmother's faith. And I'd end up, I was doing, I was trying to be something else. And I'd end up being something else, doing something else, drinking something else. And someone turned around to me and go, oh, you're a Pentecostal. And I'd be going, no, I'm not. See, there are people trying to hide out and pretend they're not a Christian. They're just trying to pretend. But, 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 the, but the crowd looks at Peter and goes, oh, yeah, it rubbed off on you. Oh, yeah, you, you, you can deny it, but you can hide the faith. You're, you're trying to say you don't have any faith, but you really, yeah, you can sit there and act like you don't know what's right, but you do. Come on, can I tell you something? There's a lot of silent Christians right now, and they're trying to act like they don't know, but honey, we do know. I mean, we really do know what's right and what's wrong. We just don't want to act because we're having too much fun not doing what's right. So we're going to act like we don't really know what's right. But our speech is, I can see you. You're just sitting there looking at me like, no, I, I really don't believe that. Yeah, you do too because your grandma told you. I get so tickled. It's so funny. My grandma told me to keep my fingers out of my mouth. The government is not telling me to keep my fingers out of my mouth. My grandma told me to keep my fingers out of my mouth. It ain't even, you don't even have to be very smart to know. Keep your fingers out of your mouth. Your speech, you, you can try to hide it, but you can't really hide it. You cannot really hide it. And then he began to curse. I just love this guy. He just admits it. I just started cussing. If they said my speech, I'm just going to start cussing. I'm just going to start swearing. Can I tell you, we're living on the edge of one of the greatest breakthroughs there's ever been. Because when people start cussing and cursing at one another, they're right on the edge of really discovering who God is. Can I tell you, last four or five years in this country, we've been cussing at one another, cursing one another, been divided this way, divided that way. Do you know when it gets that vitriol, you're right on the edge of the greatest breakthrough you've ever had, that we as a culture are right on the edge of recognizing so much because the only thing we got left is start cussing. I ain't necessarily talking about dirty words. I'm just talking about calling each other. Yeah, you do understand that preaching the gospel right now is not really very popular because ain't very many people want their enemy to get healed. There ain't very many people that really want to turn the other cheek. There ain't very many people that really want to hear the gospel about give it up. See, they're at the edge of the cross. Jesus is not going to fight and cut the ear off. He's going to give his head. See, the way you win a battle is not strength for strength, but it's to lay down your life. 
If you lose your life, you will find it. That's a completely different way of thinking than Peter's way of thinking. See, it's unprofitable to think I'll match strength for strength. What's profitable is I'll lay down my rights for you. Are you listening to me? That's not, that's not popular teaching right now. But I got news for you. The minute you begin, listen, we're on the edge of the greatest breakthrough in the church that we've ever been because we can't argue anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know that man. And then I just start cussing. I ain't got a real argument. I really don't have a defense. I just cuss at you. You, you do understand that when people start doing that, they they about to they about out of their yeah but no yeah but about it buddy you you just we're having a clearance sale we're going to clear out all that nonsense I do and immediately the rooster crowed immediately see there's just ways of thinking that God's I woke up a few mornings ago and there's ways of thinking. That this, <laughs> did you know that David had a rag and a rock? Did you know Moses had a staff? Did you know that Samson had the jawbone of a donkey? And he picked up the jawbone of a donkey and killed thousands of people. See, we've been thinking about stuff wrong. Did you know I can take this and kill a virus? This is my rag. And my rock. You have been thinking about it like it insults your rights. I got news for you. He took a rag and a rock and took down a giant. All you got to do is change your thinking. And this becomes a weapon of mass destruction. Christian, you hear me. You have gotten involved in thinking that it's not kingdom thinking. It's politics. I'll put this on and you watch. I'll go kill that giant. And I'll take his head off of him, and I'll win. Are you? See, anytime you start challenging a line of thought, you can get people. It's not popular. It's not popular to go above the politics. It's not popular to tell the truth. I can do this for you. It don't bother me in the least. Hadn't bothered me, hadn't held me back, doesn't slow me down. I'll keep gathering, I'll keep preaching, I'll keep, you watch this, you dummy, I'll take you down, cut your head off, and we'll take over the country. Are you listening to me? There's a way of thinking that was profitable, but there's another way of thinking that's more profitable today. There's a shift, well, you can feel it in this room, can't you? See, I told you, it wasn't profitable. It's not smart. Live for other people, not for yourself, Peter. Quit acting like you're strong, be strong for other people, Peter. Give your life away instead of trying to protect your thought. Think different. Look how cool. See, I was doing great until I challenged you. <laughs> Simon, Simon. He remembered. Simon, Simon. Martha, Martha. Do you catch last week? Yeah. Simon, Simon. You're going to deny me three times, but I'm not going to change my mind. You're going to deny me three times, but I still chose you to be the rock. You, I didn't choose you because you were so much. In fact, I chose you because you were the least. I chose you because your thinking is stupid. I chose you because I'm going to take you to the end of yourself. I chose you, Peter, not because you're strong and walk on water and you can. I chose you because I'm going to show you that it's not by your strength but by mine. I'm going to show you that my grace is sufficient to overcome your denial. I'm going to show you that my grace is bigger than your self-righteousness. See, God takes us to the end of ourselves so that we recognize my self-righteousness is filthy rags. The dependence on myself is foolish. Takes me to the end of myself and says, now go tell the disciples and Peter. Peter, come out of that boat. Come here, son. Feed my sheep. Come on, Peter, you're going to go over there. Even the Gentiles are going to be brought into this thing. Think about what God does with Peter when Peter comes to the end of himself and can face the reality that it's not he. 
Think about the power of the Holy Spirit falling on the book of Acts. And they're filled with other tongues. And Peter steps up and preaches one sermon and 3,000 people get saved. Because with less of Peter and more of Jesus, everything is possible. If we would have a clearance sale and get those thoughts out of our lives that are contrary to God. God could fill us with himself and we'd preach one sermon and 3,000 people get saved. Church, how do you live in the midst of anxiety and outrage? Listen, have a clearance cell. Get rid of every thought that doesn't come from the kingdom. Get rid of every thought that doesn't come and originate from Jesus. Quit allowing the world to tell you to think their thoughts after them. I don't want to, somebody asked me today if I watched that thing on TV the other night. And I said, no, I didn't watch it. I get nervous enough when Kansas City's only ahead by seven points. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God, come on, come on, Patrick, get in. You, we need to get back up by 45 points. We need to, I mean, I, I, I get anxious enough over my football team, let alone watching something else. Am I, am I making, I'm serious. I haven't got time to download people's thoughts about, I, I, I want to have Go ahead, God, just take me down to this broken place and then give me a brand new mind. I don't, I, listen, you can't renew one if you hadn't got a new one. You're transformed by renewing one, but that means you've got to get a new one before you can renew the new one. He takes Peter to the place and gives him a new mind. Doesn't think the way he used to think. Doesn't talk the way he used to talk. Doesn't, doesn't expect what he used to expect. In fact, when it comes to his own crucifixion, he said, hang me upside down. Put my head at the bottom and my feet at the top. Because my mind means nothing. My mind has to be down. Because I need to be filled with his mind and his thoughts. Hear me, I think we're on the edge of the greatest revivals. I think we're on the edge of some of the greatest breakthroughs medically we have ever seen. I think that America is on the edge of one of her greatest moments. I think that God's going to hear from heaven and heal our land. You want to know why? Because he said he would. He said he would. For nine months, I've just been praying, God, hear us and heal us. He will. You don't need to be anxious over the next 90 days. You need just to be adding your voice to God. We come and humble ourselves. And we cry out to you. No wonder Peter said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the one that roars like a lion. Resist him. Recognize those patterns and those thoughts that are not of God. Lay down your life and follow me. I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith would not fail. Did you know that Jesus is sitting on the throne of heaven right now, interceding that your faith will be better than it's ever been before? Jesus is praying for us at the right hand of the Father, saying, let them have more hope more confidence than they've ever had before. How do you live in anxious times? You realize that Jesus is praying for you. That the enemy is trying to sift you, but Jesus is going to strengthen you in the midst of these darkest moments. And when we come out on the other side, we're going to be greater than we've ever been before. This is a great moment. You need to be excited about this moment. We need to take our rag and our rock and run at the roar of the enemy because he's going down and God's going to exalt those that have humbled themselves. This is an awesome time. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to come. You know what's interesting to me? I rounded a corner at the clinic the other day and I bumped into this doctor. I know the doctor. Bumped in. Well, not my doctor. Bumped into a doctor. It reached out. Pastor Moore, it's so good to see you. I said, it's good to see you too. I'm thinking... Never been good to see me before, but okay. He goes, I've been following you in the mornings. I said, really? Yeah. He goes, you know, I was raised Pentecostal. (laughs) You know, nine months ago, it wasn't smart to be around a Pentecostal. (laughs) 
Nine months ago, oh yeah, yeah, we no, we don't we don't pray in tongues. <laughs> you, 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 are you listening to me? <laughs> but all of a sudden, nine months later, he I've been praying in tongues with you, Pastor. Would you pray with me? We stand there and pray in tongues with each other. I'm thinking, oh, this is funny. That's funny right there. Are you listening? There are blessings to COVID. There are blessings. It's taken people to the end of themselves. It's taken people to the very base of themselves. And they're going, okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. This this is fun. Some of you need to get your joy back. No wonder Peter said, don't think it's strange when this stuff happens to you. But rejoice. Because God took me to the very bottom, sent two girls in a crowd to remind me. That God's grace is sufficient. Wow. We, we, when they go to cussing, we need to be right there because something good about to happen. Uh-uh-uh-uh. When they go to arguing and interrupting over one another, they, we, we, we are in, we're in good place. I got to tickle watching all you face. How bad? I'm going, no, no, this is fun. This is absolutely fun because that means that humanity doesn't know what to do. That means that humanity is going, that means God is about to do something that's beyond our imagination. Um, You you have no idea how excited I am on the inside. While everybody else is prophesying doom, gloom, and despair, and agony on end, Searched the world over and thought I'd found true love. You met another and you were gone. Some of you are going, what? Never mind. You got to be over 40, I guess. Maybe 50. I don't Maybe even 60. I... Are you listening to me? Things are getting ready to speed up. God's getting ready to accelerate his power in your life. What used to take God six weeks is going to take six days. The power of God is about to hit the church. And it's going to happen overnight. It's going to happen overnight. It's to your advantage that this has taken place, Peter, because there's something happening. There's going to be an acceleration of the power and the ministry of God. When this stuff gets out of you, you can expect an acceleration of the presence of God in your life. If today you'll hear this simple preacher saying, have a clearance sale. If today you can hear me say, get that out of you. What's about to come into you. It'll accelerate things in your life. It'll take you higher and further than you ever imagined it could. But you got to go ahead and take responsibility. You Listen, the rooster's crowing. Rooster's crawling. I told you. I told you. You're going you're gonna to deny me. I told you. Rooster. And Peter wept. Peter wept. I've been doing more weeping than anything else. Because I've realized something. When I'm weeping, heaven's rejoicing. When I'm weeping over my own weaknesses. When I'm weeping over my own thoughts that are contrary to him. When I'm broken over my own, heaven is rejoicing because they're going, now, now, now I can do something with you. This is a great moment. Just don't run from it. Just, no wonder Paul said, humble yourself. Humble yourself because that's, that's where you find, that's where you find this grace. I love this verse and I'll close. It's that last one, guys, First Peter 5.10. But may the grace of God who called us into his eternal glory through Jesus Christ, after you've suffered a little while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. Wow. He's going to perfect stuff in you. He's going to establish stuff in you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. Wouldn't you like to just be settled? Man, we're going to come out of this more perfect. We're going to come out of this more established. We're going to come out of this more strengthened. 
I, I, I preached this message in a broad way. Thank you, God, for taking this message and making it meet the needs of 350 different people. Thank you, God, for being able to reach through that because every one of you are going through your own individual challenges. And this word, though it is spoken corporately, speaks to every one of the individual lives that are in this room or listening to it by that. Every one of you are going to come out of whatever you're going through more perfected, more established, stronger, and more settled. I promise you, when this is over, you're going to be a solid rock. When this is over, you're going to be more strengthened than you've... No wonder Peter writes to... He, he's told his story. <laughs> this is a guy that's lived through it. <sighs> okay. I'm going to get you out of here early. It's hard to believe. Number one, th this is a moment to let people that have lived it talk to us. Peter lived it. This is a moment to go back and look in this book and find out how other people lived through trials and tribulations and anxiety. This is a time, if you don't have them, you come to me. I've lived through some tough stuff. Let me talk to you about how God gets you through stuff because you will get through it. This is a time to listen to others' testimonies. You need to hear testimonies. This is a time to have a have a sale. In fact, just give that crap away. Declutter your life. Declutter it. Get that stuff out of there. This is a time for humility and repentance. Time for honesty. This is a moment to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not, not the things of this world. but This is a time to remember that his grace will come into your broken place. And strengthen you. How do you live in anxious, outrageous times? Hmm. You're not the only one. Peter said, All over the world, people are suffering. How are we going to make it? The grace of God, the goodness of God, mercy of God. Let's cry out in prayer. He's listening, healing's coming. Healing's coming. I, I just going to prophesy to you. It, it can happen overnight. Just like that. If you think about this moment, three days later, Jesus was standing back in that upper room, Tana, looking at Peter. Forty days later, Peter was, the Lord was lifting through the clouds. Fifty days later, Peter was preaching in the streets of Jerusalem and thousands of people were coming to Jesus. Think about it. Just like that. We have nothing to be anxious about. Nothing to be outraged about. Just change our thinking. Just just close your eyes right there and just sit with me. That has to go. That thought, that feeling, that emotion, that must go so that I can grow. You locate that thought, that emotion that is harming you. And in the name of Jesus, I command it to leave my body. I command it to leave my mind. I take authority over that. Hmm. I'm not going to deny that it's there. I'm going to face it throw it out I'm going to admit it I've got thought patterns in my life that have hurt me I'm not going to deny it I'm going to stand up to them listen you don't have to shout at it all you got to do is speak to it I got to speak to it no 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 I ain't have that no more I'm not going to be cynical anymore I'm not going to be a doubter. Or, uh, I'm going to throw that out. In Jesus' name, may this be an atmosphere right now where every unprofitable thought 
has to go. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray over you that the mind of Christ would be resident in you, that the power of the Holy Spirit would encourage you to speak, to prophesy. In Jesus' name. I can feel that. Man, some of you need to go get lipstick, get in your bathroom mirror, and say, you got to go so I can grow. Right? Put it in your Bible. Somebody will tweet that. That's pretty good. I ain't no good at coming up with stuff beforehand. Hey, thanks for being with us today. I really do believe that God is asking us to get everything out of our lives that's hindering from us going into the next level. This is time for a clearance cell in our head. This is time to move out all that unprofitable stuff and get profitable things going on in our minds. So if you've really enjoyed it, hey, subscribe to all the channels and then it'll just be right there in your feed and you can be uh, caught right up to date with what we're doing. And if you want to give, please hit the give button. We just certainly appreciate all the giving that, that you do for us. So until next time, I hope your faith's been energized. I hope you just live in victory with Christ.